Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Celtic are champions, you know that by now. We've got David and Jackie on, I think, for the first time since we were crowned champions. Both of you have been through struggles with me on the channel previously, so I want to just start by giving you both a chance to open up. Jackie, you first. We're champions, we've done it. It feels amazing. It does. It's uh, It's been a fantastic end to the season. I think, you know, at the start, we're, we're looking for the positives after last year, but I think how... Um, how the team's performed, how Angie's transformed the team, you know, and, and I've got to say right throughout the club, I think he's been excellent, uh, refreshing, energy, just what you want to see for your team, given everything they've got, and uh, no, you, again, you can only see it getting getting better, as you said, it never stops, and look, I think everybody will be looking forward to, to seeing what happens over the summer, and what he brings in, and what he keeps, and you know, you know, he's 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 got to keep moving forward and not settle for what he's got. Yeah. Just before we move on to you, David, um, Jackie, we've spoken to quite a few of your former players, and I think Paul Lambert described Ange as being more like a, a Vim Janssen. Um, I think someone else called him a kind of Martin O'Neill. You, you obviously played under both of those managers. In terms of what Ange has done, kind of changing the club from from a dire position, is there one you think he's more like? He's, he's actually quite like that. He's, as you can see, bits in the two of them. Obviously, Vim, there's a lot of similarities with, with Vim, you know, obviously coming from Japan, you know, um, come off the back of a, you know, a tough a tough season, um, coming in there and transforming the club. It was just disappointing. We only had Vim for a season. You know, he didn't have he didn't have the power uh, to, to get, he knew what he wanted to do and a lot of issues behind the scenes. And But Ange, I think Ange has, you know, has got, um, so much respect and power that you know you think he'll he'll get to do what he wants to do in terms of players and people coming in and and changing the whole football club you know the way he wants it the way he wants it done so but you know the the way he come in win the, the first the slow start very similar to them first, mm. first game of the season uh, win the league cup similar to them and then come on at the right moments. Um, obviously won it a bit earlier than, than we did in the last game of the season which is nerve-wracking but the importance of that year with him you know, stopping Rangers winning 10 in a row was, was massive but um, no, but I think his football I think his style of football and I think I like about him most is his honesty He's no, there's no nonsense with him he just kind of you know he doesn't mince his words he doesn't he's not a politician he's just quite straight with everything and simple and I quite like that about him yeah, I think the Celtic support have taken to him a lot um, because of that and many other things. David, champions. Absolutely, it's been a it's been a a long road, but like a total whirlwind as well. You know, it feels like it's been such a long season, such a short one. All rolled into one. It's it's quite a anticlimactic feeling now we've done it. Just now we're over the line. It's about just almost decompressing and taking it all in. Uh, fully deserved. They were the best team in the league. Uh, throughout the course of the season, most consistent team in the league. Um, I think during the first half of the year, you know, I was certainly of the opinion that it was all about getting closer to the Rangers more than anything. Just about trying to eat into that massive gap we had last season, I think. I think even if we had have finished maybe five to six points behind them, there wouldn't have been a lot of complaints. He would have got that second season. There would have been a, yeah. a recognition that he'd got closer to them, but to have this insane level of consistency within the first season. Jackie, you'll know yourself. I mean, I can only imagine how hard it is to keep up those kind of winning runs at Celtic. To do it as a, in a first season as a manager, it's, it's incredible, absolutely incredible. It's been a delight to watch, as Jackie said. The football's been great, just totally gung-ho. Talking about what we admire most about the manager, for me, I just love this uh, refusal to change his style. I know there's a I know there's a stubbornness that people question, but for me, when the results are going well, you just enjoy it and you enjoy that kind of um, all-out attacking style. I remember back to when we played Alkmaar in the Europa League and we took that with the Europa League qualifiers. We took that uh, two-nil lead over over the um, over there, and he was asked about, "Well, you're going to sit on this?" And he says, "Well." If you go with that approach, then you're just inviting them on to you and you invite a, a totally different kind of game as to what we want to want to perform. And he's always kind of had that mentality, hasn't he? He's always thought if we're on the front foot, it's a different game if we defend it. And I just I, I love it, Hamish. I, I love the I love the style he's trying to implement. Really interesting to see how it fares in the Champions League. 
But yeah. uh, that's a question for next season. Delighted to be able to gone. I think the quote from Ange was, if a vegan was hungry and they stopped off at McDonald's for a burger, would that happen? And that kind of sums up his whole uh, philosophy <laughs> with football. Why would he change just because things are struggling a bit? Did you need that, Jackie, to be a manager, that kind of belief in your own way of play? Because you were quite an attacking manager as well. Did, mm. did you ever waver? Were you ever, you know, if results um, weren't going as well? It's hard when you don't get results and you're no. You know that that's a difficult one. He sticks to his because you're 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 bringing along a, a team with you. Your players, mm. the players, and you can see the players are bought into what he right from the start. You know, the, and it takes time to win players over, then the fans over, and everything else. And everybody sees what you're doing. I mean, I've said number, numerous times, football is problem solving. You know, if teams there, will go and set up their team. Because they know the way Angie's going to do, they think they'll, they'll they'll do it this way. They'll force them in one way, and they'll try and stay in the game. You know, they'll make changes at an hour. You know, there the, there will be bits there that he will have to tinker, and which he does. He makes changes in in terms of personnel, but not his system, or not not what he believes in. Um, but when you don't win, it gives them a chance to, um, you know, to to vent their frustrations and and say things about it. But um, in fairness, Ange. He's been more successful than not, and it's he's won the league in his first season, and I believe that he will he will only get stronger. You know, with the players knowing what you, you can see transformation in players as well. You know, mm. Rapston is for me the prime example. When I watched him at the start of the season, the qualifiers, you know, in the first fifty minutes he was knackered. You know, and but you look at his game, how he's transformed his game, how he's transformed himself. And, and his team uh, from, from the management side so I believe he's he's very very good at um, also uh, coaching the team but making players better which is which is a great attribute Definitely um, did, did we see the nine minute compilation video Celtic sent out last night and did we have a tear in our eye if we did see it David? Uh, no, so much a tear. I'm not going to lie and pretend I cried at it, but it was a, it was a lovely video. Stevie. Just summed up, <laughs> encapsulated the season quite well, didn't it? It was a great video. Um, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Great bit of content, that. Yeah, it was it was brilliant. I mean, the club have done them in the past. I think for his winning trebles, um, yeah, Rogers but, season, and that was a brilliant one. But I thought the one they put out last night was was amazing as well. So great work for them. How sad are we, Jackie, that we're not going to see Celtic for the rest of May and and all of June and. <laughs> And what's your plans to deal with that? To be honest, I think these times it comes in quite quick. You know, it doesn't seem like it, but before you know it, they'll be back in for pre-season. You know, as a player, you'd think, right, I've got a few weeks to go and rest. But a fan now I would just be taking stock of it all and enjoying the moment. And then back into the, as Anne said, they never stop. You look for the next one. You let the work start. You've got a few couple of days off and you'll be straight into work again and, I still think there'll be a lot of well, there's two players obviously left already with with Rogic and Beaton. I think there'll be a lot of a lot of change as well. Um, players maybe coming in, players going out. So I imagine that will get done in the next next few weeks as well. Again, just asking you about your your days being a manager. Do you ever switch off in the summer? Is it is it hard to switch off? I mean, are you on holiday in Spain thinking about what players you can sign? Uh, it's I uh, you never it's it's so consuming. I mean the, the that. He's probably only bit there would probably be the next day or that night, relaxing that night and mm. enjoying the moment. And then the next day, then it's straight back to work with players coming and going and speaking to all the different uh, agents, different uh, managers. Diff- it's relentless. Um, you know, and that was not at the same level as what Andrew's is at. So you can imagine it'll be even worse for, for him. Stops one thing I said, Hamish, um, before the, we split up there, that he wanted ideally all of his new signings in before the start of pre-season, I think it was. Um, really? How much, how much would, I'm sure it was to that effect, yeah, how much of a boost would that be, Jackie, for a manager to have his transfer work done before pre-season starts or for the start of pre-season compared to a few weeks into it? Oh, it's, I think massive. I think I think when you, you see the way Ange... Um, the way, the way he is and the way he puts his stuff across, he wants the players to understand his stuff right away. Like the, the team just now, obviously, well, the, the guys there this season, they'll they'll know what he's about, but new ones coming in to, to adapt quickly 
because it did take certain players a while to physically, you know, a lot of them are maybe breaking down with, with different injuries, with hamstrings, and they're not used to that intensity uh, and workload. It's a, it's a different, it's a different setup. You know, if you're going pressing, 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 so you you want to get the players in very early for pre-season to go and work in that, so the you know they're up to tune right away for the for the big game starting. I know it's quite early to say this, the season's just over, but do we get the impression Celtic are going to start next season really fast? No qualifiers, you know, a full pre-season behind all of the players' belts, that they, apart from a badder that they didn't really get this season. Is there a feeling, David, that we're really going to start next season quite quite fast? You'd like to think so. I think we always have that optimism at the start of every season, though, don't we? Um, I think we always hope they'll have a quick start, especially domestically. Obviously, removing those qualifiers... I don't know, Jackie, maybe you'd be able to tell us, is that, how big a boost is it to not have those qualifiers? Or is, is it actually somehow a bit of a boost because it maybe helps match sharpness? I mean, what, where would you be as a player not having those qualifiers? No, see, to be honest, I think it's massive not having the qualifiers, no matter who you're playing or what. It's it's not the ability, it's the fitness. You know, we get, we get put out of teams early on, even the, the year we went to Seville, mm-hmm. we get put out for Bal. If we played them mm-hmm. a few months later, after a number of games, we would have we would have beat them. You know, that's not been arrogant. It's just been factual. You're you're not a hundred percent of that. You're building up your games. You're building up there. So the even when you go back to last preseason, we are just watching certain games. You could see, like for, for the team now, from then what he was trying to do, but in building up, you look at the personnel as well. Again, something watching the game against Bristol City in mm. preseason, you're. you're you know, slightly worried, <laughs> but now you look at it. But they're building up. Obviously, they he's it takes time for them to understand what he wants, how he wants to play, how he wants the team to to go about it. You know, and it's if you look at the team at the start of the season, the team at the end of the season, it's night and day. You know, with everything, how the the full backs come in, how they get the ball, how they move. Um, you know, right right through the team, even starting from the goalkeeper. Um, it's. So I'd imagine having that extra games and different bits to, to start with the players in the time the Champions League uh, group stages start, the team will be should be flying. Well, as we know, Celtic will be back next season. Two long-term servants of the club won't be joining us, though. Tom Rogic and Nir Beaton have both departed. Rogic was signed from Central Coast Mariners by Neil Lennon back in January 2013. He made 272 appearances for Celtic, scoring 46 goals and winning six league titles and 10 domestic cups. Beaton, meanwhile, arrived from FC Ashdod in Israel in the summer of 2013, going on to play 269 times for Celtic, scoring 14 goals. Seemed like more, to be honest, but only 14. He won eight league titles and 10 domestic cups. Uh, Beaton's presence in the dressing room, I think, will be missed, guys. Probably fair to say Rogic will be a, a bigger hole to, to fill on the pitch. How are we going to do that? How how much of a blow is it to lose these guys, Jackie? Um, yeah, I think they're obviously totally different. I mean, Beaton's been more versatile in terms of playing centre back sometimes or just in back of the you know, I think in his in his top his top team uh, and just, I don't think Beaton would, would be in it, you know, in the midfield area now. Is it maybe the right time for him? He's been a good servant. Both of them have. Uh, Tom, Tom is a great, great ability, and you know he can win games, games for you. Um, you're expecting now, the likes of O'Reilly to go and step in and try and take that on, and with a real consistency. Um, it'd be interesting to see if Ange goes back into the market to bring someone else like that back in as backup. You know, because you're going to need a, as it's shown this season, you're going to need a big squad. To compete with both Champions League and and the domestic, um, you know the way that the team plays, you know keeping everybody fit and fresh. What he's all about, right? he has made changes in the games between, been mostly been the full backs at times uh, between Ralston and Juranovic. but um, mm. he'd be wanting a strong squad to compete, um, and that's the biggest thing this season because. The amount of injury he's had, you look at his strikers, you know, when playing my recognised strikers, some of the games put Tumble up front and, you know, with different injuries, but they've still came through. They've still won really important games and had that momentum all the way through. Um, so I think you'll, you won't have a, a strong squad 
uh, assembled, ready for starting. Yeah, I want to spend the rest of this video chatting a bit about Rogic and, and how we replace him. David, we've obviously got David Turnbull, Rio Hatati and Matt O'Reilly that can all play in that same kind of Rogic role. Maybe none of them quite as reliable as, as Rogic at this stage, but all three are younger and have shown real quality um, at, at times last season. Callum McGregor can also play one up as well. Ange has, has played them there in some bigger games mm -hmm. last season. Is it a, and I think I'm right in saying Ange said that we want to sign a midfielder. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll just read out what he said. He said, we wanted to be a step ahead in planning for these things. So we're not scrambling at the last minute. It's about the future. And that's an area of the park we had to bolster. We still need to sign another midfielder. But having signed the boys in January, it means they're already bedded into our club. It gives us a head start. What we will look to do in the summer window is make sure the squad are stronger, more robust and increase the quality of our starting players. We won't bring in as many, obviously, it will be more targeted. So he's let it slip that he wants a midfielder. Is it a defensive midfielder, David, or is it an attacker to replace Rogic? Yeah, that that was a big question I kind of had when I seen the comments at the time. Um, I just wonder if it's a defensive midfielder he's talking about. You know, I, I wonder, I know he's got Yusuke Aydaguchi, but is he not a bit more box to box as well? You know, um, we've not really we've not really replaced Scott Brown in the sense of having that tough tackle and defensive midfielder in there that can break up the play. I, I thought the defence at times, um, particularly in Europe, and times against Rangers and spells and games, they were a wee bit exposed too easily. Uh, I think if you had a sort of Brown-like figure in there that you or one you'd be able to bring on, may have dealt with it a bit better. So I do wonder whether he's he's thinking along those lines, but. He doesn't really play with defensive midfielders, does he? He doesn't really like yeah, it's, having it's more a of a set, central midfielder, isn't it? Rather than yeah, a defensive so one. It's, it's up in there. I'm not sure you need a. I'm not sure you need an out and out replacement for Tom Rogic. I, I think you've got. I think you've got players here that could step up to that role. Rogic had a Rogic had a good season. He didn't have a perfect season. He's not had an irreplaceable season. Um, we do have Tumble coming back. I think it's a fantastic player, guys. I really, really like David Tumble. I um, think we could be expecting a big season from him. So it's difficult to know what Ange wants and his, his midfielder that he has in mind. Um, there does seem to be quite a good balance there as it is. And to be honest, when he said the comments, it was a bit of a surprise to me because I felt that you know we had a bit of an overload in midfield, to be honest. I thought we could have afforded to lose one or two. But it looks like he wants to replace them. I'm just I'm really not sure what he's going to want from them. I don't know what you think about it, Jackie. It'd be interesting. I, I think if if anything, it'll be be real pace. You know, the, the ones you spoke about there are very very good technically, but the Champions League they're very good technically and they're very very quick. You know, Tumble's excellent. I totally agree with his great ability. He's great at finding little the little areas in space, and his first touch is turn. He gets turned right away, and he's at the opposition. Uh, very similar O'Reilly as well on the left side. You know, his left foot. He's very good at getting that on that half turn and creating things, but in terms of like real pace or getting back, you know, um, at, at that level, they may be looking for something, you know, that they can help them uh, get around with real speed. Um, Callum's obviously quick, very quick, mm. but he can't be everywhere. Atati, I think he's he's reasonable that side of it. So I don't think he'll be looking for an out-and-out -out defensive midfielder because I, I totally agree with you. I don't think he's got that in his makeup. Yeah. It'll, be more, it'll be more a, a, a footballer that can break things up because you would never have said Callum McGregor was a defensive midfielder, but he plays, he can play there and start, he starts things off. It's not a stop, it's to start things off and get on the half turn and do things quickly. And um, So it might be something, something like that he's looking for. I think for all the options we have, I'd still be concerned if Callum McGregor missed a game or two because we don't really have anyone else in that team that does that. So maybe that's what Jackie's hitting on and, and maybe that's what Ange's looking for. What about the... I've heard a lot of fans saying that we're a bit light in midfield sometimes in terms of kind of muscle, I guess. Um, I think recently the, the last two derby matches, I think we've looked a little bit light. Rangers have two or three battlers in that midfield and, and we only really have McGregor and even then I wouldn't really say that's that's McGregor's game, you know, really winning tackles and getting a foot in. We do still have James McCarthy there. Are, are we writing him off as a player who could do that for us, Jackie? Um yeah, I don't I don't think 
you know, just the way Angie's set up his team, I don't think he's featured a lot this season. You know, I, I don't think he'd be his type, you know, in terms of moving the ball quickly and doing things quickly. You know, he's, I think when he was younger, yeah, 100%, he could get around, he could pick things up, he could make the passes, but he's no... He's not obviously the same as what he was, James. Um, still a, a, a decent player, but you know, I think in like we said earlier, I think in the starting eleven, I don't think he would he would feature in that. Um, a very good backup uh, for for different reasons, but I think he'd be looking. I don't think Ange is a type to have stoppers anyway. You know, like to go and be physical. He likes to play football. Likes a ball to do it, and he thinks they can compete regardless of size. You see it with Kyogo and Mieda, they're not big players, but they get stuck in. Abada, they get stuck in. Um, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it is. It's going to be interesting to see how he does in the transfer market and what he brings in, because it, you know he's he knows obviously what he's got and what he what he thinks he needs, and he's. I think you've got to trust his eye. So far, he's been excellent. The ones. You know that he's brought in from Japan, and what he's worked with, or what he's seen against them. So, you know, he's. Uh, I think that will be. That will be quite interesting, quite exciting to see what he what he does back for his replacements. Is Gucci? Is he going to be a player who can do that for us? I mean, I've seen bits of him, and I've been quite impressed. But I don't get the impression he's a. a, a a guy who really likes a tackle. I think he's just another player who can kind of move the ball and be nice and tidy. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's it's um it's difficult to say too much on the Gucci. I'm not gonna pretend I, I watched him every week in the J League before he arrived. Um I can't really go and watch seen of him in the flashes here. He's looked tidy on the ball. Difficult to know if he'd be the one that could uh, could add the muscle you'd want in the midfield. We haven't seen a lot of uh, of defensive midfield work from him. Um I do agree that we have been a touch light in the midfield um, against Rangers, I think. They've just looked physically stronger at times, um, which is strange because that certainly wasn't the case at Parkhead in the 3-0 game and it wasn't even the case at Highbrooks either when we won 2-1. thought we performed well in the yeah. midfield in that game. Um, but yeah, the last two, just sort of in the last half hour of the games, we've seen to dip away. Um, I just think it's more about not having much protection in front of the back four. Because I would say for an hour before we ended up drawing the game at Parkhead, we weren't, you know, nobody was saying Rangers were playing fantastically well and Celtic were one up against them and we were, were playing all right. It was only really that that last half hour. Same at, at Hamden, I think we spoke about it a few weeks ago, guys. We were one up in the last 13 minutes or something. Again, there weren't too many complaints. Carter Vickers, if he doesn't hit the bar, then we're talking about a great performance. So I'm not sure... I just it's difficult to sum up how big an issue it maybe is, yeah. um, and how we'll cope against Rangers next season. I just think that we could use that option in front of the back four at times because we can be a bit easy to get at, uh, especially with the gung ho style. You know, against these better teams who are going to have better playmakers in the final third. You look at Scott Arfield who just threaded one right through the defence too easily at Parkhead in the closing stages. You, you describe in Scott Arfield as a playmaker, David. Well, I'm just That's saying controversial, mate. they have they have player they have players in the final third, better players in the final third who can who can pick a pass out to the centre forwards, much much more than the likes of a Motherwell or a, or a Hibs or a Dundee United. And it'll be it'll get tougher again when you go into the Champions League. I just wonder if you had a figure there sitting in front of the back four at times, um, whether you could help negate that a little. Um, certainly against Rangers at least so it's going to be really interesting to see what he does I do think if he did that he would be wavering from one of his principles in terms of how he plays yeah. so I mean um, you'd see over the years like guys like Kante they're no, they're no big they're no physical they're no they're just right. fit their energy and they play they keep things going they break things up you know maybe something like that you know, they're not no, no, no that easy to find but something like like that kind of player you would think Ange would go for more than a big physical guy to stop things. You know what I mean? Somebody that's yeah. mobile, gets about, breaks things up, starts things off. That kind of player, I think, would be more suited the way he wants to play. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, that's convinced me that'd be interesting to see if he would if he would go for someone mm -hmm. like that. 
because Angie's just got this way of playing. But he's coached at the World Cup with Australia. And I know international football is different because you, you kind of can't go out in the transfer market. But I, I just, I mean, we're, we're probably being picky here because, you know, we've just won the league and the midfield's great. And we've got so, I mean, I think Hatati's great, O'Reilly's great. Turn, these three players could all be brilliant players in years to come. But I think we're just doing what Angie will be doing, looking at it and going, how can we be better? You know, we never stop. So, um, yeah, I think we'll address this at a later date, guys. I think we're expecting Celtic to do some business, hopefully mm-hmm. hopefully in the next kind of couple of weeks, maybe. It'd be nice to um, get a wee signing or two and really kind of keep things going over the course of the summer. Um, yeah, I think that's us for today, guys. Just before we go, um, I was at an event with... Uh, Frank McAvenny, Murdo McLeod and John Hartson on Friday, Jackie. And you were name-dropped by John Hartson as the best player he ever played with at Celtic. How do you feel about that? Uh, He he, he did then say, I need to mention Henrik Larson as well, but he said you first. uh, That was a nice one. Um, He was my roommate, John, so maybe a bit bit, uh, (laughs) maybe helped. I looked after him when he first came to the club. But no, it's always nice to be recognised that John's had he, some issues with me as well <laughs> over the years. A good, a good guy. Man. Yeah, he came like, across well. He got a big uh, round of applause as well when, when he said that. So the, the room yeah. was clearly loving Jackie McNamara. So, oh, nice. yes. I wish yeah. You should have been there, Jackie. That's the yeah. problem. Well, you'll be here next week. We're going to get you on for the final one of the season. Um, don't know what we'll chat about then, but hopefully something's happening. Um, in the meantime, we're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers, everyone. We're very, very close. I think we're like 80 away. So let's make it happen today, tonight. Get to 30k, and then I'll promise to shut up about it for the next fortnight or so. Thanks very much, guys. We'll speak to you tomorrow. <laughs>